In this video, I want to further explain what is meant by a two-dimensional probability distribution. And in this video, we're going to be considering a 2D probability distribution for continuous outcomes. So as before, we're considering two processes, or we're considering the outcome of two separate processes, where each of those processes is random in nature. And by random, I don't mean the colloquial use of random. I mean that the outcome of that process is uncertain. And unlike the discrete case, the individual outcome of one of these processes belongs or can be seen as belonging to one of a continuum of possible outcomes. And because the thing which we're describing can be measured as being continuous, and because the outcome is continuous in nature, the distributions that we use to describe it are, unsurprisingly, continuous probability distributions. The example that I'm going to be using here is going to be two processes. One of them is the volume of beer that an individual drinks per week. And I'm going to use the random variable B to represent that measurement of the volume of beer that they drink on an average week. The other thing that we're going to consider is the number of grams of body fat that an individual has. And just for completeness, I'm going to say that we measure the volume of beer drunk in terms of the number of litres. So why are we using probability distributions to describe the outcomes of these two processes? Well, the idea is that what we're imagining we're doing here is that we are sampling an individual at random from the population. And because before we actually measure their level of body fat or ask them or they tell us their level of alcohol that they drink per week, we are uncertain about both of those outcomes. And hence, because of this uncertainty, we use probability distributions. So what might a probability distribution function look like in this case? Well, we've got two potential outcomes, and so we've got on our axes here B, our random variable, which represents the volume of beer drunk per week, and F, which represents an individual's level of body fat. Now the third axis, as for the univariate case, represents a probability density. So what might our probability distribution function look like in this case? Well, it would be a kind of surface. So I might sort of represent it in this sort of form here, where we can sort of imagine that the thing I'm drawing is actually kind of a three-dimensional surface, or rather a surface which exists in three dimensions. But this representation that I've shown thus far is a bit difficult to analyze. And so what we typically do is we represent the probability distribution function in a slightly different form here. What we do is we use something which is known as a contour plot. So here, the bottom axis will be the volume of beer drunk per week, and then the vertical axis will be an individual's level of fat. Then what we do is we draw contours in our graph. And these contours represent lines which have all got constant probability density. So here, this purple line which I've drawn here might correspond, in the left-hand case, to a sort of path which is represented by the purple line I've shown here on the left, where all of the combinations of body fat and alcohol drunk per week that I've shown here by the sort of path on the sort of horizontal plane correspond to the same level of probability density. Then I could draw a contour of slightly lower levels of probability density and represent that by the green line, and perhaps that green line corresponds to the sort of green line which I'm, I'm now writing over the orange line on the left-hand side here. And then finally, I might draw another contour which corresponds on the left here to the sort of line of level of, a sort of lower level of probability density here, and I represent that in the right-hand case here by another sort of contour which I draw here. Because humans tend to find two dimensions easier to think in than three dimensions, we often use this kind of thing on the right-hand side here, this visualization trick, which is known as a contour plot. But remember, whenever you see a contour plot, what essentially is happening here 
is that the probability density is sort of coming out of the page at you, or out of the screen in this case. Where in this case, the pink line here corresponds to a high probability density, the green to a slightly lower one, and the light blue to a slightly lower one still. Okay, so now we've covered how we kind of visualize a two-dimensional continuous probability distribution, but what are the conditions under which that distribution is actually a valid probability distribution? Well, much like the discrete case, we require that the values of our function, which is now a function of the two random variables, b and f, must be greater than or equal to zero for all potential values of b and f. And we see that that's satisfied here because of the fact that our probability density, or I haven't really shown it, but it's always greater than zero. The second condition is essentially the analog of the two-dimensional discrete case where we had to do two summations. Now, because we're dealing with continuous variables, what we do is we do two integrals. We integrate the probability distribution function of now it's of two variables, b and f, between b being between 0 and infinity and f between 0 and infinity. It's 0 here in both cases because you can't drink a negative volume of beer, nor can you have a negative level of body fat. And this integral must be equal to 1. And the intuition behind this condition is just saying that any individual that we pick from any population must belong in somewhere in this kind of plane that we've drawn here, where we've got positive levels of body fat and positive levels of beer drunk per week, or not, at least non-negative values of both of those individual things. So what actually does this two-dimensional integral kind of represent? Well, we can imagine it as being sort of working out the volume which is contained under this surface here and plane which corresponds to a probability density of zero. So we're kind of working out the, the volume underneath this particular surface that I've drawn here. 